Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at the British Infantry Rifle Section from 1944. This is a result of some recent pictures we released on our Facebook page, the Allied Star one, which we have a link to in the description. These have been really popular and we've had quite a few questions come through asking for further detail on the equipment carried. So hopefully this video will answer those, some of those questions. We discuss the items carried in a bit more detail. So the pictures were done using the suge suggested organisation from a training manual, which was Infantry Training, Fieldcraft, Battle Drill, Section and Platoon Tactics from 1944. Um, as a note here, in the field, what people carried could, you know, change quite a bit to what was actually stated in the manual. So, you know, bear that in mind. But as I say, for this purpose, the, the photos we did were following the manual um, in regards to how much equipment was carried and what was carried by each member of the rifle section. So on paper, this is a 10 man rifle section. It's increased from eight men earlier in the war. Um, it's led by the section commander who would normally be a corporal. We then have riflemen, a number one and number two on the Bren, who are privates, and a second in command who could be a lance corporal. But again, in the field, if the section had casualties, etc., then you know it could be a private stepping up as second in command or a lance corporal stepping up to actually lead the section. But as I said, for this purpose, we're going sort of by the book and you know what the section would look like sort of on paper. So Firstly, uh, the section that we're looking at would be one commonly seen in Northwest Europe in action there. Obviously, if you were in action in Burma or in Italy, for example, then it might look slightly different. For the purposes of this, I mean, my primary impression is 1st Battalion, the East Lancashire Regiment in 1944. So that is basically what this is. Uh, based on. Um, so starting off we have the section commander, in this case it's a corporal, who is leading the section. So starting at the top we still got the Mark II helmet. On the side there you can see the helmet flash for 1st Battalion East Lancashire Regiment. Uh, they did have Mark III helmets starting to trickle in in 44-45 but in this battalion the main helmet used was the Mark II. Next to that you can see on the left there we've got the lightweight respirator. Again, you know, even though gas it wasn't used on the battlefield, still, you know, everybody was issued with a respirator and you see them being used all the way through the war. Uh, underneath there we've now got our 37 patting webbing. In this case it's been blankoed with KG number three. And this was the colour used by the battalion. Starting at the top there, we've got a haversack, or small pack, as what a lot of people know it as. So in there, you've got your personal kit, and on the outside there, you can see a ground sheet rolled up. Underneath there, you've got the braces leading down to the belt, and you've got two basic pouches. As our section commander's armed with a sten, he has now got the slightly longer Mark III pouches so they can fit Sten magazines in. You've got the earlier Mark IIs, you'll notice that they don't really fit in properly. Um, if you look at original photos, they're easy to spot because you sometimes see them done up and you see on either side the end of the magazine sticking out at the top, which is ideal. So, as I say, in this case, we've got the proper Mark III pouches, old Sten mags. Um, we've got a Mark II Sten as the weapon. The machine carbine was normally, uh, on paper, the weapon carried by the section commander, but again in the field you see them carrying rifles instead sometimes. Um, we have five magazines for the Sten, so that's 160 rounds of 9mm ammunition. Uh, we've also got the bayonet on the side there. It doesn't fit the Mark II Sten, but it's still handy to have if you need to probe the ground for mines or open a can or anything like that. Uh, we've got two grenades, in this case they're the 36 mils bombs 
And above that, you can just see the loading tool for STEM magazines. If any one of you have tried to load them by hand, you'll know how difficult it is. So that's why that's been issued. On the right, we've got the water bottle in its carrier. And just behind that, we've got the sections wire cutters in a pouch. Finally, on the webbing, on the bottom there, we have got the entrenching tool. In the beginning of the war, we had a spade-like entrenching tool, but that was soon given up. And we went back to the earlier model that was seen more in the First World War. Uh, there you can see the helve on the outside and on the inside of the pouch, you'll have the head. Uh, this is quite a late one. This one's from 1945. So on the end there, you can see they've got the attachment for the bayonet. Again, to use it as a mine clearing tool. Uh, the final piece of equipment for the section commander we've got there is a general service shovel. So as a note, the section, there would normally be five shovels and two picks distributed about. Um, on paper, you sometimes don't see the section commander as carrying one, nor does the second in command or the number one on the Bren. But again, in period photos, you know, you normally see them being carried by quite a few members. So in this case, our commander's carrying a shovel. Uh, so that's the section commander. Oh, the last piece of equipment, sorry, I forgot. Underneath the haversack, we've got a gas cape rolled up. Again, like the respirator, gas wasn't too much of a threat, but you know, the idea if it was used, people were issued with anti gas equipment. If you do read accounts, though, especially with this regiment, um, they were used a lot as just an unofficial waterproof cover. I mean, I've used mine in reenactment, and to be honest, it was a better waterproof than the ground jeep. So, you know, the handy you have. Our next member of the section is a rifleman. So obviously as a rifleman you're carrying a rifle. So in this case because it's late war and we're in northwest Europe we are carrying the number four rifle rather than the earlier SMLE. Obviously again if you're in a different theatre of war you might have the earlier model rifle still. Uh, with that We've got a bandolier there with 50 rounds of ammunition, 303. At some point in 44, uh, this was actually doubled. So you'd have two bandoliers, so in total 50 rounds in charge, uh, sorry, 100 rounds in charges for your rifle. And next to that, again, we've got our basic pouch there, which the bandolier could go into. And we've got one grenade, and again, another 36 grenade. Below that, we've got our water bottle again, our entrenching tool. We've got the bayonet, which will fit on the rifle. And on the other side, in the left-hand pouch, we've got two magazines for the Bren light machine gun. The section will have a Bren, and most members of the section will carry mags to keep that firing. These are loaded with 28 rounds of .303 ammunition. So if need be, they could be refilled with rifle ammunition or vice versa. Uh, likewise, we've still got the helmet, the haversack, the respirator, and again, a, a tool, either the general service shovel or the mic. Our next member is our second in command. So, as I said, this would normally be a lance corporal, but not always. Uh, in this case, again, they're armed similar to a rifleman in the section. We've got the number four rifle, ammunition, bayonet. Uh, we've got two mags for the Bren in the pouch. And then we've also got here a set of utility pouches for carrying extra ammo. The second in command, uh, the Bren number one and the Bren number two would form the Bren team in the section. So their role is to keep that gun firing and supplied of ammo. The second in command is going to be commanding them, pointing out targets um, and following the section commander's orders in regards to setting up the brain in firing positions, etc. So he's got a set of utility pouches there for carrying extra brain mags. Um, again, we've got a respirator. We've got a general service shovel there, but like I said, they didn't always carry them. 
And finally, we've got the section's machete as well, carried by him. In a lot of the manuals, it's actually listed as being carried by the section commander. But in reality, the second in command would have more use for it in sort of clearing scrub and branches and things to get the brain gun set up. Our next member is another member of the Bren team. We've got the Bren number one. So again, very similar loadout like we've already seen. In this case, because no rifles carried, we haven't got a bandolier of ammunition. We've just got four mags for the Bren gun, two in each pouch. Uh, obviously here, we've got the Bren light machine gun. This is a late Mark I. And we've also got the tool wallet for the Bren gun. And finally, we've got our number two on the Bren. Uh, this person is armed with another number four rifle and ammunition. Uh, we've got a couple of hand grenades. We've got five magazines for the Bren gun. Again, two in a basic pouch and also three there in the utility pouches. The number two on the Bren is the gunner's assistant. So he will help the gunner with things like changing mags, changing the barrel, but also his primary duty is to keep that gun fed with ammunition. So as the section is moving around, he will be collecting up more magazines off the riflemen or other members of the section. So there's an adequate supply of, supply of magazines and ammunition there to keep that gun firing. At the bottom there, we've got the Bren Holdall, and in there you can see there we've got the spare barrel for the Bren gun sitting on top of that. And that is basically the makeup of the rifle section. Um, as I say, you know, nothing too uh, specialist there. It's all pretty standard kit. But, you know, this is sort of the basic infantry equipment and weapons that you're going to be seeing, you know, in most units in Northwest Europe. Um, So I hope that kind of explains a little bit more detail the equipment being shown there for people who are not too clued up on it. Um, as I say, it's not a video going in depth into you know, the rifle section and how it operated. This one is just basically looking at that equipment shown there um, and saying what it is really. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, there's some other videos on the channel. There's one on drill. There's another one on section tactics that you might find useful. And also, as I said, you check out our Facebook page, the Allied SAR Reenactment Group. We'll have quite a few updates coming on there in the near future of the events we're doing and some other things we've been working on. Okay, listening. Bye bye.